to be working with P5 Collide, we want to be able to de detect collisions between two shapes. Now there's a lot of math behind that that you'd have to do, um, but instead of doing all that math, that messy math, we're just going to use a library called P5 Collide. It's going to have these functions that do all the math for us. Now to use a library, the first thing you always have to do is actually like load in the library. So for this library of P5 Collide, before I explain it, I just want to say let's load it into our project. So right here, it says include P5 Collide to your project. We're going to grab this line of code, go back to our P5 web editor, and there's this tab over here where we have different files. In index.html, we're going to add this in, and boom, now we got the P5 Collide. You'll know that it's loaded up if, when you press play, it says P5 Collide over here. That means everything's good to go. We can start it happening. So now that we got P5 Collide actually loaded in, uh, let's take a look at this library. So P5 Collide helps you just detect collisions by different uh, points. So if you see here, these are all the different functions that you have. So there's like, if you want to detect the collision of a two circles, collide circle circle, collide rec circle, collide line line. The collisions are all, all the math is taken care of for you by this library. It's great, it's amazing. All you have to do is tell it where those shapes are on the screen, it'll do the rest for you. So let's start off today with uh, using Collide Circle Circle. The first thing we wanna do is just make some circles, right? So I'm gonna say, um, let's make circle one. I'm gonna say circle one, and we're gonna have this follow our mouse. So we're gonna say ellipse, mouse X, mouse Y, and let's make it have a width of 80. Okay, so we got our mouse. Sorry, let me make my canvas a little bigger for this just so we have more room to work with. Okay. And then let's do circle two, circle two, and let's do ellipse. And let's make this one just like in the center of the screen. Let's make it 200, two, actually, I guess this would be 300, 300, uh, 200. Make it nice and big. All right, so now I got my two circles. Obviously, nothing's happening yet because I haven't done any of the colliding work. Now, to get them to actually detect the collision, first I'm going to start by making a variable. So I'm going to say let, uh, you know, circles touching okay so this is my variable circles touching this is where I'm going to just kind of like store if it's true or false that they're touching right so variable store data this is just where I'm going to store the true or false like is it touching is it not touching so now let's go down here circles touching and I'm going to initialize my variable here so I'm going to say circle touching and this is where I'm going to use the function so I'm going to go back here and it says collide circle circle let's grab this function let's collide circle circle because we have two circles colliding in this example. See, we're going to try to get this. Oh, you know what? Let's switch these because you can see the other circle goes behind it. So let me grab this, put this over here. Let's make this a little prettier. All right. Oh, now it goes on top. Good. All right. Now this is, this is all you got to do. So remember, collide circle circle is the function, the P5 collide function. This will do all the math for it. All you have to do to tell this, all you have to tell this function to make it work is where the two circles are and how big they are. So that's basically all that, that's, that's there. So in our circle one, it's at 0 0.300, 300 with a width of 200. You gotta tell it the other circle. So it's at mouse x, mouse y, 80. So we give it all that information. And now it'll do all the processing, to detect, see if they're touching. So just to kind of show it on a basic sense, let me just put it up here on the screen. So I'm gonna say text, uh, circle. Ooh, I forgot to make that plural. Circle's touching, okay. Um, and let's put that at 2020. So now check it out. So you see on the top left corner, it says false. This is because at this moment, these two circles aren't touching, right? Circles touching is just gonna be true or false. Are they touching or are they not touching? Now look what happens when they're touch, turns to true. So anytime, like the minute they touch, it turns to true. So this is doing all the math and detection behind the, behind the scenes that makes it uh, possible to detect if these two are touching, all right? Now, let's actually use this. So my last step here is to use, so I'm gonna say if the circles are touching. Uh, let's just like, we could do anything here. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna say text, uh, ouch, right? So we wanna say that, ouch, ouch, that hurts. Let's say ouch, and let's put that at uh, 300. No, let's do 250, 300. And that's it, that's all we need. So let's see. Ouch, 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 ouch. Because this is saying, if this is true, right, show this text. If it's not true, don't show it. And let me just, just make this a little cooler. Text size, I don't know, 30, does that sound right? 
Just taking it. Yeah. Ow. 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 Ouch. 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 Done and done. So that's um, our first example here. All right. We're getting two circles to detect if they're touching. Let's just do one more example. Let me save this and let's just do a whole new one. We'll do this all over again, but let's do like a circle and a rectangle. So once again, I'm just going to repeat the process. The first thing I have to do if I want to do collisions is I got to grab this over here. I got to grab the library and actually put it into my project, right? So I can actually use this library. Now let's start off by making a rectangle and a circle. So I'll say, uh, let's see here, uh, we're going to do rectangle. And we're going to do, um, let's see here, I'm just going to, honestly, we'll do it at 100, 100. 200, uh, 100, that sounds good. Let's press play, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good, that's a good rectangle, right? Best one I've ever seen. All right, and then let's make our circle. Once again, I, I kind of uh, I kind of just like making it follow my mouse circle. I wish I could spell. Do ellipse, and this one will be at mouse X, mouse one, 200. Now let's do 100, now let's do 150. All right, so now we're gonna just try to detect when these two are touching, this is rect and a circle. So once again, I'm gonna start by making a variable. So I'm gonna say, let uh, uh, rect, uh, whatever, we'll call it shapes touching. Honestly, the variable name does not matter, right? So let's shapes touching, okay? Now the next part here is to once again initialize. So I'm gonna say shapes touching is equal to, and this is where I get the function here. So rectangle and a circle. So let's see, rec circle, that's what they call it. So let's just grab this function right here. Okay, rec circle. Now, you, it's important that you put this in the order, correct order. So it's a rectangle, then the circle. All right, so we're gonna give it the coordinates of the rectangle and the size. So this is at 100, 100. And uh, what's it called? It's uh, 200 by 100 in dimensions. Let's grab this. Oh no. That's <laughs> wow, geez. And so this will detect if the two are, are, are touching. So let's just check to see if this worked again. So I'm gonna do text, I'm gonna do shapes touching. Let's put this at 2020. Let's see if this actually works. So it's false, 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 the midnight touch. Oh, look at that, it's working perfectly. Excellent. All right, now that it's working, let's actually do something fun, shapes touching. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make these things change color. So let me show you how I do that. Um, I'm gonna put a fill here of red Oop. shapes all right so check it out now when i do this it turns red but it doesn't turn back which is kind of annoying right so what i'm going to do is actually let's give this an initial color of blue okay so this will be blue and let's make this uh, purple uh, fill uh, purple okay so now and now this isn't turning red you'll see and let's just make sense of that like why is this not working anymore well, that's because first in the code, remember code runs top to bottom. First, what it does is it says shapes are touching and it turns it red, but then it turns right back to blue. So it kind of like defaults to blue every time. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this conditional statement and put it between the shape and its initial color. So it's between the initial blue and red. So if, remember, so it's blue by default. If the shapes are touching though, I'm gonna make it red. And then I'll kind of override it. So check it out. Boom, 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 boom. Done and done. There we go. So that is today's lesson. Uh, I think I think we got it. All right. Peace out. Good luck. And that's it.